This video is an abbreviated version of a clinic that I did for uh, the NMRA uh, division that I belong to of the Eastern Iowa division. Um, I'm not going to get into all the specifics of the history of the Jordan spreader. I added a few slides that were in my original clinic that I did, but all these were ones that I pulled offline. And if a person really wants to go and find information out there on the Jordan spreader and the history of the company, the different types of spreaders and plows, they're there. Um, a lot of good information. But essentially this video is on the uh, building and construction of my first 3D printed model, which happened to be a Jordan Spreader. The original idea got kicked off from an article that I read on N-Scale Railroading. Um, a modeler had bought a 3D printed Jordan Spreader for many of the same reasons that I would want a Jordan Spreader. They're a cool piece of equipment. But unfortunately, up until this point of 3D printing, you were only finding them in brass or scratch built and that. And for the most part, a Jordan Spreader is going to be a piece of equipment that may just sit in a railroad yard and look cool. Because, well, if you're running a brass piece and it catches something and derails or gets wrecked, you may be out three or four or five hundred dollars. And with a 3D printed model, obviously, yeah, there's still some expense to it, um, but it's still plastic and it's one of those kits that can obviously be uh, uh, bought again and, and redone. And so this was my first 3D printed model kit and I had done a lot of reading and researching on what goes into a 3D printed kit. And obviously one of the big things was once you get the kit out, you would take a look at all the parts. And so one thing that I noticed when I looked at all the parts is, was there anything broken? Was there anything cracked? Um, did it all seem together? And everything on this kit was put together by small sprues. So it was basically printed as one solid piece, except for the front plow. Now, um, saying that, the front plow and some of the other parts were very thin. Um, pretty delicate and so I knew right away that I had to be very careful with them otherwise you could crush them very easily and so once I cut them off the sprue um, kind of did just a little bit of cleaning but for the most part uh, the pieces were really crisp and clean um, it was time to kind of put it in a warm soapy bath and just kind of rinse off any of the residue because like some of the 3d printed models um, there are some oils that will surface in time and so it's really good to kind of treat them um, prime them if they need a primer uh, this one did not uh, before you get ready to do the building otherwise you could build a beautiful model and then all of a sudden it might start seeping these oils that will kind of crinkle up the paint or give it a, a kind of a discolored look For my model, I think I gave it a wash at least three times, put it in warm soapy water, letting it soak, taking it out, changing the water out, and just repeating the process. And then finally, when after the third time, I just laid the pieces out on a paper towel, and I think I let them dry for probably, oh, a 24-hour period before I did anything with them. So as the model was drying, I had already started kind of my bill of materials of detailed parts I would need. Obviously, 3D models come without trucks, so I had the Microtrain's trucks that I needed, couplers. Um, I was going to replace the railing and stanchions that came 3D printed because they just seemed too weak. So I replaced those with gold metal models and some brass um, rod. And then also things like the BLMA cut levers, air hoses, um, things like that that I was going to add, um, the caboose smokestack for the cab, and then obviously a horn for the cab roof as well. The first place I started with the model was I removed the railings off the back. Uh, the 3D printed railings and stanchions were just too fragile on that. 
And I was also from the article cautioned about the air tank that sits kind of on the flat car part of the uh, Jordan spreader being real fragile that it would come off and needless to say it came off. And so I thought, hey, it might be easier during the build just to remove it. But I started the coupler pocket and as you can see, it's a very thin film where the coupler slips in there. So I did some cleaning out just to make sure that that Microtrain's coupler would fit in there nice and firm. I will come back in a few other photos and kind of put some outside bracing of styrene around it uh, just for some stability. The same was true with the front coupler pocket on the plow. Very fragile, um, but I kind of cleaned it out just to make sure that a Microtrain's coupler would fit inside there. And uh, it did. At the same time, I thought it was also a good idea to kind of clean out the bolster on the Jordan spreader to make sure that the trucks would fit in there nice and firm. Also, when I put the trucks on there, I realized how light this Jordan spreader actually is. And there wasn't a whole lot of spots that I could hide or put weight. And knowing that this would be an item that's going to necessarily be pushed by, you know, a locomotive, I want to make sure it had some weight to it. Um, so once I put the wheels on there, I also um, added some additional um, styrene in the cab. The cab seemed to have kind of a, a little bit of a bow to it that it would bow inward. And it also seemed fragile. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to put two strips of styrene across there just to add some stability and strength. Next, I moved to the handbrake. So took a drill uh, and pin vise and kind of cleaned that out and then put a new brake wheel on there. Did not come with one with the uh, 3D printed, but obviously had the 3D printed stand for your brake wheel. And while I was at it, it was real easy to add the extra details on the cab roof. So used a Microtrain's Caboose smokestack and then a BLMA uh, brass horn for the cab roof and then basically set that aside because other than those two roof details the roof was pretty well completed after that i moved to the side of the car body and started penciling kind of the measurements where i wanted the stanchions to go so i started drilling in little tiny holes there and then added the gold metal model stanchions then i would come back in time and uh, glue the brass tubing I would use for the actual railing. For the railing I would measure about a three inch piece and then I would run it through the top holes of the stanchions. Um, I could feed that through there and then I would just do a 90 degree bend and then tie it into the uh, cab of the Jordan spreader. For the mid rail, I would glue those on with CA. For the in rails, it was kind of one piece that I ran through the back, took my barrel nose pliers bent down, then would bend again, um, would do a sharp 90 degree and kind of drill a hole and tie it into the car body. And any of the excess that I would have, I would just trim right off. And so these obviously were fragile also, but they weren't as thick as the uh, 3D printed railing that came. And I also did the railing coming down the steps from the cab down the steps to the, the kind of the floor of the Jordan spreader. And in that one photo, you can also see I glued the air tank back in its place because I was kind of done with that area. So by this point, I was pretty much done with kind of anything I was going to add to the model came with an air hose coming down the front of the nose of the plow and just kind of put all the pieces together for the car body. Obviously the wings um, are not added to this phase yet, um, but just looking at the overall structure. Here you can see a nice photo of kind of the brass rails coming down the front steps um, that's kind of hidden because of obviously the height of the plow and then just kind of overview of kind of looking from top down um, of the Jordan spreader as well. So overall, you know, pretty happy. Still felt it was a little light, um, but there was not many more places I could add weight to it.
Well, I'm not going to lie. Painting for this model was pretty much a breeze. Um, I mean, it was basic flat black over the whole car body. And so I gave it two good doses of paint um, and then let it dry about 24 hours in between each time I sprayed it. Um, I wanted to make sure that there was no residue or oils that, you know, would start seeping and never noticed anything. And to this day, it, it still is still, you know, plastic model, just like any other model we would, we would purchase in that. So I let it cure for about another 24 hours before I started the decal process. Decaling was pretty easy. Uh, pretty much white graphics on a black car body. And so, just like regular decaling, it was microscale decals that were just added. And then I set them in place with a little bit of solve set. Um, as it was in this phase, I also touched up around the windows to give them nice silver. And then any of those kind of hydraulic areas that I wouldn't be able to reach. Um, once that the wings were added, I also touched those up in silver as well. Now, if there's one thing I would do different with this model, it is the wings. I did sand the wings, but they were so thin that I didn't want to tear them apart. And so, as you can see, even after being painted, you still see the lines of the 3D printing through there. I think if I was to buy a kit like this again, I would almost fabricate my own wings out of styrene and maybe only use a little bit of the hardware, such as the hydraulics that came with the 3D printed, but go with more my own smooth styrene. Because those lines from three feet away, that model looks okay. From a foot away, that model looks okay. But when you start doing really up close photos of it, those lines in the 3D printing really bother me. And my fear is once I would start weathering the model, is that going to just kind of collect in those lines and give it a kind of an unnatural look. By this stage, the decals were all added. The side wings and the front plow were added. I did add a little extra weight into the cab but I didn't want to glue the cab roof on yet because I was still going to put some window glazing into the cab and the doors once the weathering was done. So it was kind of time to do a test run of it around the layout. There are a lot of different weathering materials I have used over the years, pan pastels, chalks and that. But for this particular model, I used the Bragdon weathering powders. And so I used a lot of earth and rust um, along the blade and around the plow itself, figuring that in the wintertime, you know, those things would see a lot of abuse, scratched up paint, everything else. And then if they were used for any kind of ditching work and stuff like that, they would get all chewed up. But when they're not in use, that exposed metal would, you know, oxidize and get rusted right away. So I kind of went heavy around those areas on the front of the plow and on the edges of the blade. And then I used a lot of just earth and kind of just gave a light dusting on the other parts of the model. Um, for the window glazing, I just cut some regular window glazing that I had and put it inside. And once I felt like everything was secure in that, I finally sealed up the top and put the cab roof on for, for good. So the ultimate test was the Jordan spreader ready for the rails. So here we see it making its first trip out with a Jeep 7 and an outside brace caboose. And the things I was looking for was obviously clearance on the front of the plow 
and also making sure that it was heavy enough that it wasn't going to get pushed off the track by the locomotive. And I had no problems whatsoever. Clearance was good. Um, the plow itself had a lot of weight to it. And so when it was being pushed by a Jeep, um, it tracked very well in that. So this will make a fun kind of operation for my operating sessions, whether I say there's a ditcher crew or something out there um, during operating sessions. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of quick little recap on how I built my 3D printed Jordan spreader. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will try to respond back to you as soon as I can. Thank you again for watching. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.